Okay, so I'm going to go over the statements people have made just because this is uh, kind of instructive to look at a simple curve, you know, riverbed situation uh, that's a little more realistic than what, what I've drawn. So uh, I think it'll suffice to go through. So I'm going to go through basically everybody's comments one at a time and talk about the areas that they're referring to and, and detail out, you know, what I see to be the situation. Uh, honestly, the only way to really tell is to go into, you know, a little closer view of the riverbed and in particular see it in high flow as well as low flow. But we can do some, you know, visualization exercises that will help us to understand a little more about what we're looking at here. So let's take the first statement. Uh, the current will help non-particles to move away while the gold is really heavy making it stay so it'd be easier and also it doesn't look deep. Well, uh, appearances can be deceiving. Uh, these areas along in here are likely fairly deep. Uh, the area where the rapids are, as you can see by the foam and the, and the rocks protruding through the surface, they're likely to be shallow. Now something else to note about the river is it's narrower here and then widens up and then it's widest where the rapids are, but notice that the river actually doesn't completely submerge all of these boulders and cobbles on this side. So we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> the next one, gold will lay deep in water, but a flood will make deposits on the downside of rapids. Uh, yes, it will. It will also make a deposit on the upside of rapids. And I'll get to that in a second here. Um, but it's very important to recognize that, you know, everybody's kind of catching this about the rapids. They play an important role and they tell us a little bit about what happens in flood flow as well as in shallow uh, spring and spring flow, you know, when it's flooding versus uh, summer flow when it's down low. Uh, scour hole near the center of the picture, the beginning of the gravel bar, a large boulders on and around the bar, nice hole on left side near top where hydraulics would be the highest during high water flows, many riffles. Yes, they create low pressure areas. Uh, yes, a riffle can create a low pressure area, but important, uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people refer to pressure and the reality is the thing that moves gold isn't so much pressure as it is friction. That is, when water moves around the surface of an object, it, it basically encounters resistance on that surface. And the amount of force that can be applied is proportional to the friction, not the pressure. In other words, if I take water and I put it in a very, very deep hole, there will be tremendous pressure, but absolutely no friction because there won't be any movement. Once I start moving that water around that object, that object will tend to move when the water hits a certain point. That point is defined by when the friction force is equal essentially to the stiction or the amount of sticking power that object has on the bottom of whatever it's resting on. So what we're going to do is kind of be looking at that from the standpoint of river flow. So pressure is part of the picture here, but the honest truth is it's really about friction. It's about a thing called the Reynolds number, and I won't get into that because that's just way, you know, it's kind of like Mach number. It's something in the way of math, but it basically represents the frictional forces involved here.